across the world in so many countries there will be events like this uh, where people will be talking about the fact that torture still exists, that there are countless victims of torture who have not yet got justice or um, due process um, for what they went through. And, and that's not just individual victims who've been tortured themselves, but that's the, the suffering of, of the families and the wider community. And I think it's also worth reflecting um, and possibly very much reflecting in the case of Bahrain that there is a long legacy of Western um, and as we're in London, British um, both practice of torture um, and we can think maybe to the case of, of Kenya uh, where um, you know, finally there's been some sense of um, accountability and acknowledgement by the British government for what went on there. Um, but also when we look to what's happening in um, Guantanamo Bay um, or uh, Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan or in Iraq, again, that sort of link between Western support and Western complicity in torture and the roles of that. And so bringing this onto Bahrain, I wanted to start with a quote from um, Charles Balgrave's diary from 1932, um, where he was describing um, how he was able to get information from a, um, a group of prisoners, and this is the quote. Um, Prior came over and we composed a long telegram to the PR reporting the matter. Then Haji Salman came in and after some time I went with him up to the fort where I spent the whole morning till two o'clock interrogating the prisoners. At first they wouldn't speak, but I beat a few of them till they did speak. It was all very barbarous and illegal, but on some occasions one has to behave illegally. So that was 81 years ago and the question is, what's changed? And whilst the British advisor might not be directly involved in torture, in what's being described in, in the title of this event, the, the dungeons in Bahrain, beatings still exist. And whether that's happening in the prisons themselves or now outside in stables or youth centres or unofficial detention camps, um, it's, it's a practice that has continued despite the fact that as human beings we all have a, a universal right not to be tortured. So I'd like to introduce the two speakers that we have today. Um, to my left is um, Jawad Farouz, and he was a former Wifaq MP, and he is now stateless after the uh, Bahraini government stripped him of his citizenship. And, and Jawad himself personally uh, has experienced um, torture. And, and to my right, um, the uh, Mohammed Artaja, uh, human rights lawyer, um, who also is, is a victim um, and is working with many of the victims of torture in Bahrain. And so I'd like to turn first to um, Mohamed al Taja, um, who um, will speak to his experience and to the, the current situation and the problems um, being faced. Thank you, Mohamed. <coughs> I think not most of you know that the panelists here share the same cell for a two month and both of them are torture survivors. Uh, if we speak about the problem of torture in Bahrain and the mentality which govern the law implementation that the bodies, including the judges in the judiciary system. I think if we go and speak about this aspect, there is no need to speak that torture is illegal in Bahrain, and Bahrain is a member in, in the CAT the Anti-Torture Treaty, since 1998. As the, 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 the laws governing the, the trials in Bahrain prohibit the use of torture to extract confessions. But if we go directly to speak about the mentality of these persons whom enforce law, whom execute the laws, and even these persons who legislate, 
you will find out that all of them comes from same families, the ruling family or families loyal to them. And these people who work to them as a police, as interrogators, it is quite hard that somebody who used torture since, since he become a policeman, till he become an officer or a judge or a public prosecutor, you want to ask him after more than 10 years, stop torturing detainees. This is very difficult. It's like, <coughs> how I give an example, it's like a, a man who, who, who work as a cooker and he used to do sandwiches. Suddenly you come to him and tell him, okay, I want a, a buffet of uh, 10 main courses include rice, include meats, include... Uh, it's difficult because he's used to make the sandwich. So whenever he receives a detainee, directly start beating him. Show him the ugly face. Use a device to electrolyte him. So it's very easy. He will, he will confess and you will finish your case. So why you spend all this time putting in ingredients, uh, being polite with him, or all these things? And, and uh, if, you, if you look to the overall situation, how do you want a policeman to be different from his uncle or his cousin who work in Bahrain TV? and who named the protesters a, ter a terrorist or a traitor. It means that he, he, he used to this kind of treatment and he believes that these protesters who raised against the ruler asking for better human rights situation, for a democracy, for a dignity, for a freedom. You want to tell, to, you want this policeman to believe that I should respect this man whom I was told that he is rising against what we call it in Islam, and this is very difficult because this man should be hung and killed and tortured and all these things because he is rising against his imam. And this is not accepted in the, in the Muslim world. So it's very easy. And that's why you have seen hundreds of casualties, hundreds of people being killed, being, being, being tortured, being sacked from their jobs. And the problem moves not only to the law enforcement bodies, it moved far over to the judiciary system. Again, the same mentality, the same families, the same people. That's why it's hard to convince a judge that I should prove that my clients is being subjected to a severe torture and he deserved that I prove that this man is innocent and he confessed <coughs> because of the bail he was subjected to. <coughs> and it's, it's, it's simple. The judge has no room, he has no time. Or even he has, like what we said in Arabic, he don't have ma'andakhil uh, aslan. Because his mind is to concentrate to give a very fast, rapid judgment without whatever the, 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 the situation is, whether this man is guilty or innocent. And since he comes from the same mentality, it's hard for him to implement the, the, that, that uh, uh, main idea in the criminal law which says that the, 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 the person is innocent and is proven that he is guilty. So that's why and moreover 
the instruction, the overall system, the overall situation needs a punishment for these outlawed, for these traitors, for these terrorists. So, and finally, the judgment is mainly clear for most lawyers. That's why during the past two years, a lot of lawyers has lost their interest to go and participate in this, in the, in the, in the, in the human rights, in the defending the, 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 the detainees. Uh, and a lot of them, even though they are, some, most of them are youngster, and, and they have talent, they have ambition, and they have, uh, most of them uh, have interest in being a criminal lawyer, where, where, the, 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 he chased fame, even in these in this kind of circumstances. But again, failing to prove that his client is, is innocent, several times this will lead to a condition where he won't like to go and represent any political detainees. And, and, and it is really a big problem in Bahrain. As, as lawyers are penetrating and escaping one by one from these cases and from courts which never implement the, 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 the fair trial procedures. And uh, quite astonishing that several Top figures in the, in the human rights bodies like the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, High Commissioner itself, Nafi Bilai, stated that the trials are, are, are unfair in Bahrain. Uh, that the General Secretary himself, if you want to say, so many times that it is false trials. Several NGOs grew all over the world, like Amnesty Human Rights Watch, uh, Human Rights First, Redressed, has stated continuously and have condemned the <coughs> huge sentence against the protester in a simple charge, <coughs> gathering or expressing his view. Moreover, lawyers are similar, are one part of Bahrain community. And as they represent these detainees, for sure they, have, they will be part of intimidation and they will be repressed by one way or another. That's why you have seen myself being arrested and charged with the same ready charges, legal gathering, inciting the attack to regime, so on, so on, so on. Similar to these charges to, 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 to Jawad, the son of Sadiq al Habshi was spending 10 years in jail, Alim Shema, Musa Ali, and others. And if you want any Bahrainis here, Ghazi over there, who spent almost a year, then he was caught it. <coughs> Again and again, all part of Bahrainis has been to the same situation where they, are, they have been a victim of torture, a victim of losing jobs, losing their, their right to get a proper house, proper education, or doing normal life. That's why you can see the number of asylum seekers here and outside the uh, UK being doubled every year. And you seldom find, won't find Bahrainis all over Europe. But it is quite a problem, a big problem in Bahrain, because if you want to change the situation in Bahrain, you should be able to change the whole regime. 
as it is impossible for you to believe that a repressive regime like Bahrain, like the one we are having in Bahrain, can be a democratic regime where it gives the right of freedom of expression, of freedom of gathering, the rights to be educated, to be treated, to study, and rather the rights to have a fair trial. And if you want to be able to change the whole, uh, all these bodies, so it's another problem of Bahrain. That's why we are sharing our views, sharing our pain, so that by one way or another, we will stop screaming, stop our pain. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. I think uh, Mohammed's final words there about the stopping the pain um, resonate very strongly with me. Um, I, I've never been to Bahrain, but I've been working um, on it in various capacities for the past two years. And before 2011, I'd never met anyone who'd been tortured. And, or I don't think I'd ever even met anyone who was a relative of someone who's been tortured. Yet in two years, I have heard countless, countless tragic, horrible, stories that are very, very difficult to hear because particularly the barbarity um, of the situation in 2011 and, and what we're hearing now is quite staggering to feel that that actually exists in the 21st century. Um, and what is quite remarkable to me is how, how much concrete evidence there is of torture at a sort of an internationally accepted level. So. We have the, the BICI, the Bicky Report, where it accepts the fact that there was uh, a culture of systemic torture and a culture of impunity um, in Bahrain, and it, it documents, you know, I think about sort of 56 forensic cases uh, of torture, including five people who were tortured to death. And this is a report that everyone accepts for all its failings, yet at the same time, there is no justice for those victims. Many of them remain behind bars, including leading uh, figures like Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, um, Ibrahim Sharif, um, Hassan Mishema, um, and, and others. Um, and so the question sort of becomes: What tools, what strategies, and how how can there be an end to um, to torture and, and and an end to that pain? And sort of on that, I want to turn to um, Jawad Farouz, who I think is going to give a presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, John, for uh, sharing this lovely meeting with so sincere and people that we see in front of us. First of all, I have to thank them for coming and joining us today. Uh, okay. So. We are here today to give evidence that uh, the torture in Bahrain, it is not uh, individual cases, it is a phenomenon and it is part of the mentality of the regime. It's been like that since a long, long time. Yes, it's been escalated and been in wide range during the uprising of people Bahrain 14th February, but it goes back even before the events of Bahrain. Uh, and if we see the types of the torture being applied in all oppositions and non-oppositions, uh, we can see that it is part of the systematic method that how the ruling family wants to control the, uh, the, the country. Uh, it is a long history and it is a very, very uh, deep subject, but due to the short time, I will focus mainly on the torture to give an evidence that it continued even after the Bassoonis report and even after the uh, uh, UPR recommendations, which was in Geneva, in Geneva uh, on May 2012. 
all of us used to hear that the opposition are exaggerating about the torture in Bahrain, which is already being recorded in Best News Record. And what they say is part of a, an old history which the regime admit about that and accept it. So why once again you are repeating something that's already is being recorded and then Sioni reported on that one. But today I want to give clear evidence that the torture it is just continued the way it was, but it's becoming more escalated even after that. So here a clear phrase from Bassoon's report, uh, Articles 1719, which part of his recommendation uh, of his report is clearly mentioned that to end up to end up the torture in Bari, certain procedure to be followed. And up to now, none of these. There have been 26 of uh, recommendation in general, and this article related to the torture. And single uh, part of this phrase is not being implemented at all. Secondly, <coughs> UPR recommendation, as you know, in May 2012, there have been 176 recommendations by uh, human. Uh, 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 by the United Nations Human Rights Council that Bahrain to apply and, and, and accept that one and they, they verbally agreed on it and part of it related to the uh, uh, torture and to end up the torture and the treaties and so on and uh, part of it was how to conduct uh, the uh, to rectify the optional protocols of the convention against the torture and so on but Everyone knows that the habit of the regime is to use the title and show the international community that they are applying what in nature they are doing against that one. <coughs> Maybe Bahrain is a unique internationally to find out so many organizations in Bahrain related to the uh, uh, human rights. We have a ministry called Human Rights uh, Minister. We have a committee within what's so-called Parliament, a human rights committee. We have a uh, human rights uh, establishment, national human rights establishment, but in content, all of them are dictating what regime wants to do and just to uh, whitewash and polishing the image of the uh, regime. None of these uh, either ministries or organizations, they admitted that there are a serious and systematic torture in Bahrain by an opposite all international human rights organization day by day they are giving reports, statements and in all occasions they issue a deep uh, 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 evidence that the torture in Bahrain it is so serious and there is no willing to stop these uh, uh, practices. Uh, I will give some examples. I collected so many examples, but I wanted to give you as a model to show that how the torture in the street, as an example, it continued in Bahrain, and it is not torture, even the killing. Here I have the case that the uh, uh, security forces, they shoot the martyr Mahmoud al-Jaziri from a close range which led to his death in February 2013. All of us, we know that the Bassouni submitted his report on November 2011, and the recommendation by Geneva was on May 2012. But let us see this incident, how it happened directly.
station there in Nabi Saleh, one part of Bahrain, and he directly been targeted with the uh, tear gas bullet uh, from so close distance and directly toward his head. And we saw that uh, this, this, this vessel still, there was gas out of it, and one of the ministers came out and took it and, and, and took it back and threw it toward the, this uh, security police. In a few days, he passed away. they said that we have to be in the street and whenever we are calling the people we should be in front of the demonstration and they stopped us to do so and this you can see the scene and this was exactly after, before one year here I am here Sheikh Ali Salman Father Abbas Vice Chairman Hassan Marzouk. We took flowers with us to say that we are peaceful. They hit us directly over our head. He was one of the guards guarding us and Sheikh Ali Salman. One of the demonstrators, he stayed there to, to rescue him, see what happened to him. He is power. Said Ibrahim. See, he's being arrested. And he's been kept in prison for more than 45 days. And they continue that one. The religion of his crime is he spoke out and he wants the right and defender human rights people to be respected. Last one, a little bit long, but I don't show it all. It is a selected uh, scene of how people have been tortured on the ground, on the street. So many clear evidence. This is all of it after Bessun's report and even after Geneva's uh, 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 UPR's recommendations.
what's up here that so many of these videos uh, could be shown. Uh, short remarks. Systematic torture has been a culture of the regime in Bahrain. I, I mean it because we have so clear evidence and no one can believe these individual cases. Torture has been practiced at the time of arresting a victim. It is not matter you torture someone to extract information from him or during the integration. No, at all. The purpose of the torture most of the time being that for emulating you. And it has happened to most of us. Even before they raise any question or even they know oh, your, uh, your identity, they start torturing you at the moment, at the moment of arresting. And sometimes more wealthy you are, more torture they apply on you. More well-known person you are, more torture they apply on you. They used to ask us, what is your salary? And they found this more than 1,000. They start beating you more. They say, how dare you become in a position and you are living in the good condition? Or what is your model of your car? If you say it is 2004, 2005, they start torturing you more. That They say you are living in a luxury life. How you become in a position? or are you owning your house, or is it rent, and so on. All these questions are being asked to me, and accordingly I've been tortured when I answer these questions. So, torture has been practiced at the time of arresting a victim in detention centers. It is so clear in the prosecutor's office. I've been tortured in the prosecutor's office. You know, it is a standard internationally when you go to the prosecutor, you think that in the safe hand, but most of us being tortured in the prosecutor office. In the youth hustles, still many, many youth hustles in Bahrain being changed to the torture centers and farms. So many farms are being changed to be hiding. Why? Because part of the recommendation was that the detention centers should be monitored closely and the Minister of Interior and the regime, they said, okay, we will apply the CCTV in all these detention centers. But in between what they done, they shifted the torture center to unexpected places like farms and the youth hustles and so on, or even in the cemeteries. The regime has failed to submit the periodic reports on torture, which has been pending since 2007 up to now. They didn't receive any such reports. High-ranking officials has been involved in torturing prisoners. Everyone knows that even the king's son, Nasser, and even Khalid, they have been involved in torturing prisoners. And even the rest of the ruling family and high-ranking personnel. Time of the torture documented by al I just give you a brief, just for few, last month, last month, couple of two months, as a, as a model. Uh, depriving from food, prey, and using of restroom. 21 victims, just a couple of them. Tying up in harmful way, in, in harmful way, 19 examples. We already recorded them because the victims came and they told us what happened. Insulting one's religious and personal beliefs, 16. Uh, splashing of cold and hot water in a harmful Manners eight, beating with rubber holes, sticks, kicking, punching, etc. Twenty-six, standing on feet for long, long hours without sleep. Twenty-eight, solitary confinement. This is number two numbers. Detention in a, a tremendously cold rooms. Four. These statistics today is being published even in Al Wasat newspaper, uh, uh, being given to them. Urgent steps to stop torture in Bali. One, torture will continue unless torture are brought to justice to put an end to the culture of impunity. Two, implementation of justice or just transition. Implementation of true and genuine democracy. Without changing the political life in Bali, without shifting to true democracy, no one can believe us that torture will be stopped. No dictator is, is, is ready to change to or stop torture unless he will be removed from his post 
and he will change the political life to democracy. And they are not ready to do that. For that reason, we believe the torture will continue as long as the dictatorship is there. Visit of the special reporter on torture to Dubai, which is very important. And still, it is a question for us. How international community are so weak, cannot even impose a visit of a special reporter where regime accepted that he will accept his visit in Geneva in May 2012 and, 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 and after that one. But so simply when the regime lately rejected it and they became silent and mum. And we think that they are part of this con conspiracy. Or otherwise they can impose on regime to, to, to let the special reporter to visit. Opening an office for the High Commissioner, definitely. Imposing different sanctions on Bahrain's regime. They have so many methods they can do that. At least diplomatic sanction. They shouldn't allow the uh, main personnel from ruling family and the rest to travel in Europe and United States. Uh, and, and most of them be charged to be tortured, even the, king, the king's son. Adaptation of Roma Convention and so on. So in short, our message is the people of Bahrain will continue their struggle. They will go through all this pain, but meantime, they think that the duty of the international community is to put more pressure on the regime. And they can do that. And they have the ability to do that. It was so clear that without the pressure of international community, never the regime accepted the, the Sionist community to come in Bahrain and make investigation. So when they impose the, the Sionist community on the regime, easily they can impose on the regime the special reporter. They can impose on regime to stop the torture. In the meantime, I think for long run, the people of Bahrain, they think that they will run this, they will win uh, this, this struggle, but it is really shameful to those who are claiming that they are democratic and they are freedom fighters or they are protecting the, 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 the freedom in the rest of the world, in the third world countries, but when it comes to Bahrain, I think they prefer to protect their financial and commercial interests than to their democratic principle. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we'll um, move on to questions and comments. Um, we've probably got maybe sort of half an hour or so. Um, I think probably most people in the room know everyone, but if you could just say who you are before um, the question or comment.